to be as conscious as we can of all the ways that we're being programmed and to start consciously programming our brain for the better and to get where we want to get. You know, the saying, oh, what is it, that you... Yeah, if you keep if you keep thinking, keep doing the same things, you're going to keep getting the same things. It's something like that, you know. So we really need to start. If we're going to keep thinking the same thoughts, we're going to keep being in the same place. And we really need to start consciously working to work with the power of our brain to change our thoughts, you know, which ultimately changes our life. Hey, I'm Ronya Sakata, founder of the Joy Academy and Queen of Joy. That's how my friends call me. It's so important to me that my life is full of joy and that I enjoy every moment because I know how fast it could be over. We can do so many things to bring joy in our lives, to create joy, and that's what this podcast is all about. I talk with people and they tell me how they bring joy to their everyday life and how they create a life full of joy. So let's dive right in and please tell me after the episode what your takeaway is from this talk. Welcome Natalie Stokel to this episode of the Let's Create Joy podcast. It's so cool. You're in your glittery top and I'm in my winter sweater over here in Switzerland. You are in Australia, but please tell us yes. yourself. Who are you? What do you do? And of course, we want to know how do you create joy in your everyday life and what brings you joy? Because that's what we are interested in here. Awesome. Cool. So I'm Natalie Stokel and yeah, I'm on the Sunshine Coast in Australia and it's the middle of summer. It's like seven o'clock at night here and it's really hot. I won't show you, but I'm just wearing my undies and this top. <laughs> it's really hot. <laughs> so, And wearing just undies and not much brings me a lot of joy. Uh, so I have a business uh, called F-Bomb Affirmations and I wrote a book by the same name. Let me just grab a copy I can show you. Yes, show us. F-Bomb Affirmations. So basically, I help people uh, to change, to challenge and to change their thoughts. Um, and so they can start creating the life they really want to create, start living, I guess, by design rather than by default, you know, that kind of active living and having an active co-creation in your life via your thoughts. So I'm really passionate about where neuroscience and woo-woo intersect. And my book is a lot of... Uh, about that the first part of the book is a lot about the neuroscience behind the mindset and affirmations and the second part is a whole lot of affirmation hacks and one of those hacks is how to uh, how to is adding an f-bomb to your affirmations which just like supercharges them so f-bomb natalie i don't understand <laughs> an f-bomb well traditionally f-bomb is a swear word or the word fuck fucking fucked so if you think of a different thing of affirmation, like uh, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. And then we add an F-bomb and I've fucking got this, I've fucking got this, I've fucking got this. You can feel the energy already that it brings to the affirmation. And one of the most important things with your affirmations is bringing feeling in. And an F-bomb can instantly bring that feeling, the feeling tone in. So when can I jump into a tiny bit of brain science? Yes, of course. Let's yeah. okay, let's cool. do what we so, what what comes to our mind because I really think it's like meant to be what you want to say right now. Awesome. Yes. Okay, awesome. So when we emotions indicate significance to our brain. So what this means is when we're feeling something emotional, it's like our brain wakes up and takes note. So the way our brain works, you know, we're designed to survive. And the job of our brain is to gather information in our environment and to assess that information and make predictions about our future. Do we want more of this or do we want less of this? Is this a threat to our survival or is this a benefit to our survival? And when we feel strong emotion, often it's when we're scared or excited. So these strong emotion points are indicators to our brain that something significant is going on that we need to take note of. So when we can really add emotion to our affirmations, it's really helping with that, the rewiring of the new affirmations 
and the new beliefs and thoughts in our brain. Uh, so yeah. So cool. We will put your book all over the show notes and into the into the quotes that everybody knows where to get it. That's so cool. I need to read it too, for sure. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. So and then what, what is, brings me joy? Yes, what brings you joy? Like yes. personally, I think that's so inspiring because we're all different. And um, yeah, it's just so good to know. Yeah. Cool. So what brings me joy? Uh, Self-expression brings me joy. Creativity brings me joy. Chocolate and gin bring me joy. Sequins bring me joy. Dancing brings me joy. I think, yeah, like, High, things that feel high vibe to me bring me joy and actually doing those things. I, I am an introvert, but I really do like to be social and I like to have fun. So when I do those things, I, I, I try and do them well, like party really hard and then go back into my bed and cocoon. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but I think they're all based around self-expression, you know, expressing myself to my fullest whatever that looks like if that's wearing sequins or if that's uh yeah doing some art or something creative or listening to music yeah a lot of the arts bring me joy and creativity whether that whether that be music or um you know painting writing obviously yeah and seeing other people in their self-expression that brings me a lot of joy as well and um are you creating joy like in your, like, let's say you have a really normal day with some work and la 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 and then some family things or just like a normal day and you could have a title boring or too normal and then adding some joy in. Are you doing that consciously like, oh, let's, let's uh, turn things upside down or let's do things differently? What are your strategies? Yeah, definitely. To make every every day, like that was a good day. Yeah, I mean, music is a big one for me. I'm really into music, so I have a whole lot of playlists with all different names that that relate to things. So I've got a couple of ones that are high vibe or happy or happy high vibe, those kind of things. So music is a big one. I'll, I use music consciously. Uh, in nature and beauty. We live on property here. We live on land and it's only three acres it's not massive but all the houses around us you know there's a lot of farmland so it feels a lot bigger than it is and being in nature and mindfully being present in nature and recognizing the beauty that I, I try and do that quite consciously where we live um it's like a two-story house and the view from our living area is amazing so it's really easy just to walk from the living space to the balcony and be oh, be that present kind of coming back to joy and it's impossible to look at our view and not feel joy so that's pretty <laughs> special yeah and then I, yeah, I love music and dancing every few a few times a month uh, my partner will play dj and put some tunes on i'll drink some bubbles and we'll have a little party so yeah probably my biggest is music and dancing and then cuddles with my kids connecting with people with friends yeah, I think it's important to consciously to consciously do the things that bring us joy and to actually, like you say, to do them, not just to think about them or, yeah. Yeah, or rush, rush um, through the view spot and not taking it all in. You could do that. You, yes. It could be just normal. Oh, yeah, well, that's not worth my time. Or you can consciously be aware of the beauty around you even though if you live yeah. in a small apartment in a city and you have a beautiful living room, you created it yourself and you have, mm. for example, a yellow wall and you just say yeah. like, wow, I, I have a yellow wall. How amazing is that? You know, like I like people could say, oh, yeah, you have a beautiful view. I don't have a beautiful view, but it, it's not dependent on things like that. You can really this appreciation is so powerful yes and being in the moment and being present to the moment uh, and music I think everyone's got access to music you know and you can put your headphones on close your eyes and just be transported to wherever the music is going to take you that is a really quick way for me to get into joy as well 
That's so cool because in, in January, Kevin Layler was on the podcast and we were talking about music too. And he put together a playlist for the podcast. And I would love to ask oh. you to, to um, have just a joy, a joy podcast um, kind of playlist from you personally. I think it's also a way I to, love it. to learn about a, a person even more like, wow. And I discover so many new tracks. I'm not... I love music, but I'm not like discovering, you know, the, the time. It's just like what, what what's coming up. Yes. So I love like yes. selected, selected music from Natalie. That would be so amazing. Nice. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, I can already think of a few songs that I've got on. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Aww. Because it's, it's very amazing. personal also. Like, oh, no. Do you share your playlists? Are they open on Spotify or is it? Uh, yeah, some, yes, yeah, definitely. Some are open. Um, so does my um, user. I think it's just Nataland underscore AU, AU for Australia. Uh, that I'm pretty sure that's linked on my Instagram as well. So I, I have some shared playlists and then some are private. But yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got so many. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So cool. And let's let's um, dive into more of your work because it's so interesting. Like this is you told about the book, but how do you work with all these things? You know, like practically, yes. I love to have yeah. practical advice to really implement. Yeah, for sure. So I'll tell a little bit of the story about how I got into them and how I kind of created F bomb affirmations. When I was brought up, like many of us who are who were raised in female bodies, I was brought up to be a nice girl, you know, to be polite, to be kind, uh, to be considerate of others, thoughtful, maybe to be a bit quiet, uh, to be clean, to be not messy. Yeah, there were a lot of, I guess, the conditioning from my parents and from my culture and society was to be a nice girl. And as I grew up, I began to realize that a lot of that conditioning didn't serve me. Of course, I want to be kind and considerate, but not at the expense of my own needs, which often when you're a nice girl, that can happen. So when I got into my teens, I started to realize that I wanted to just change this about myself. And I started looking for tools and strategies to start unraveling some of the nice girl conditioning. And I think the biggest strategy I found was getting in touch with my feminine power and the feminine power, that kind of fierce feminine. And when I became a mother, that really helped me get in touch with my fierce feminine, even just going through the process of birth and, and birthing my children. I, you know, I was, I was loud, I was messy, I yeah it was very vocal I wasn't a nice girl I dropped a lot of stuff and I have two daughters and of course I want them to be nice people I just don't want them to be nice girls so I really want them to be in touch with their fierce and you know nice girls don't swear but swearing is super powerful and so I started adding I'd been doing a lot of work with affirmations and when I was pregnant I did a lot of work with affirmations as well and I created a whole lot of affirmation audio tracks and I ended up putting them on um, SoundCloud and people, you know, you could just pick a few tracks and make a playlist of all your affirmations, you know, maybe your affirmations for self-esteem, affirmations for uh, health, you know, you might put five or six topics and create a list. And then if, as I, that was just after I had my first child. And then a few years later, I started tapping into the fierce more and realizing the power and adding an F-bomb to my affirmations and started working with, I want to go back and work with affirmations again. And I logged back into my SoundCloud. I hadn't been there for a long time. And I'd had like over 200,000 plays of my affirmations. So I was like, whoa, okay, <laughs> I'm onto something here. And yeah, adding the F-bomb in just gives that like, that you know that fierce that power and then that's when I decided I want to write a book about it and I figured I better do a bit of research to see if you know there was any research behind it and there is actually quite a bit of research about why adding a swear word to oh the, the research what swearing does to your brain sorry so it, it uses more than just the language center it uses the emotional center it 
parts of your brain. They've even done studies when people who are swearing when they're at the gym exercising, they can lift up to 30% more weight. Like the, the, power, <laughs> the power of swearing is uh, pretty amazing. And on a, the level of a collective, they've done studies when uh, people who swear are, are also, people who swear are often people who are more honest as well. There's a correlation between swearing and honesty and, uh, you know, and ethics. So on a neurological level, we have connections in our, uh, like the collective consciousness, but we have connections. We associate swearing with honesty, with passion, you know, with energy. So when we add a swear word, it's like we're bringing all that collective energy of, yeah, of the energy of the the fierceness of the passion of the yeah I guess the yeah we're just bringing the whole of the the collective yeah the collective energy of a swear word into that into that affirmation into that point which just makes it so much more powerful than just the affirmation as well as hacking and getting you know the emotions working in your brain as well and if I'm now super intrigued and I want to work with you how how can i do that like oh, buy your sure. book or so, yeah, buy my book yeah definitely book. i've got affirmation tracks i also have a course uh, that i um i'm launching shortly or i may have just launched depending on when this comes out called high vibes less fucks and the course is focusing on helping people to stop the cycle of overthinking so Often, you know, our brains are so amazing, but they're so busy. And often we don't realize the power of our brain and we just kind of let our brain do its thing. But what I'm really, I'm really passionate about people understanding is that if they, when we begin to understand the power of our brain, we can really begin to make changes in our life. And like I said before, we can be a, an active co-creator of our life rather than just a kind of passive uh, passenger you know letting our brain do all the you know, do all the thing so and that's I guess that's how I work with affirmations a little bit differently too I work with affirmations at the level of the belief not just the thoughts so you may have heard before our thoughts are responsible for our feelings and our feelings are responsible for the way we behave or our actions And our actions or our behavior is responsible for what's happening in the world around us, our outcome or our reality. So then we can say, you know, our thoughts affect our reality. And, that, and often that's how people work with affirmations on the level of the thoughts. You know, I'm changing my thoughts, I'm changing my thoughts by repeating the affirmation. However, below the thoughts are our beliefs and it's our beliefs that are responsible for our thoughts. So if we're working with an affirmation, uh, so let's pick something we're working on i want to, i want to be socially confident i want to be socially confident but if we have a belief underneath that that we're for some reason we, we don't believe we can be the belief is going to be stronger than the thought so uh, the the way i work with affirmations is this, i say i work with them to reveal and to heal so we're revealing what the um, underlying belief is and then we're healing it via the affirmations so they can be so super so super powerful and when people realize that they can actually change their beliefs and change their thoughts which then goes on to change their feelings their behavior and their reality you know that's a pretty powerful place pretty powerful place to be so yeah in the course high vibes this fucks we go through a lot of i talk a lot about that we go through a lot of the self-coaching techniques to start working with your thoughts and your beliefs on that level I love that it's so self-empowering again. It's not like work with me. I know the truth, like how to work on yourself forever because it's a it's a journey for life and, and we can yeah. always improve. I do that in the Choi Academy too. Like you you are your own coach, and then it's yes. not me. I can step back and 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 the clients can do the work. That's so cool. How do you Like, I think everybody knows this feeling. You say an affirmation and you're like, no, it's not true. And, and then yeah. there is this lingering belief. First, you have to find it and, and like, uh, I got you. And then yes. what do you do? Like, how, how do you so within change the feeling? Because 
as soon as you really did the work with your belief, you can believe your affirmation really with yes. your whole body. And it's not like words yeah. which are not true. <laughs> so this yeah, this definitely. Step, can you tell more about this step? Because I think that's the most powerful yes. change. So what I would do is I would, I mean, do you want to give me, give me an example or an affirmation and let's break it down? Hmm. I... I feel rich or I feel taken care of or something like this. And then you're like, no, yeah. I'm not. it's not the reality. So okay. what are you telling me? It's just yes. not true. So we want to reveal, we want to reveal the limiting beliefs underneath. And the way we do this, these are beliefs underneath, uh, underneath our conscious, so subconscious beliefs. So a really simple way to do this is just by asking the subconscious. And we do this by free, free writing. And we flip the affirmation. So we would say, um, it is not possible for me to be rich because, and then you go blah, 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 and you see everything that comes out. Or it's not possible for me to feel, what was your second one? To feel taken care of because, and we let everything come out. Why it may not, why we believe it may not be possible. And we can do that with a, with a few different things. It may be, it's not possible for me, or it's not safe for me, or... Uh, I'm not worthy of, you know, just see, just see what comes out and you'll be surprised what belief comes out. And then when you know the belief, often just recognizing it is so close as, you know, halfway there, but then you can create an affirmation on that, that belief. So just say one of them was, it's not possible for me to feel taken care of because, uh, oh, help me out here. Why wouldn't it be possible? Because I'm ugly. Uh, I don't know. So ugly. Okay. Yeah. 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 Totally. So then we that we need to work on the the that's a a limiting belief to work on. Ugly. So we would we would create some affirmations around the ugly thing, separating it from the taking care of. So it's almost like you break break it down. You you pull the threads out and you work on each thread and then you can go back. So when you worked and created the affirmation and worked on healing around the the feeling of because I'm ugly, then you can go back. And when that's healed, then it, the, what was the original one that we take care of? Sorry. The, it won't have that charge. It won't have that belief underneath it. So we'll be more in tune with the, being able to work on, on the level of that thought, not just the belief underneath. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And the, the yeah. free writing, I don't have to do a meditation. Just, just, you just do it. Because just free write, yep, just free yeah. write. Just free write, no. I mean, if you are into meditating, you could, but no, you want to keep it simple. And But don't censor yourself. No censoring when you write. Really let what come, come. And if you can, keep moving and keep writing so stuff has got to come come out, you know, and don't, don't consciously think about it too much. Just really let it come. It, it can be really interesting to see what comes. And then you can, as well as, creating affirmations around it you can also ask yourself some questions you know is this true is this true that uh, because I'm ugly you know you can do some deeper inquiry around those questions uh what am I making it mean is a really good question um how, how would it feel to not have this belief like so just some the questions to kind of te tease out the what's going on around that belief I love every exercise which just needs a pen and paper and yourself, you know, I love that. Like, oh, wow. But then <laughs> like, oh, no, I don't do that today and not tomorrow. And yeah, maybe next week. And then you, you're pushing it away because it will change things. That's because yeah. it's powerful. And that's then, why and the way that you have a coach and, and guide you through the shitty yes. work you don't Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah um and the way our brain works as well remember our brain likes to uh predict and protect so it likes to predict the future and protect us from threats in the future and often that can work by when we have beliefs that are about things that may be of a threat to us you know our brain will do everything it can to push that away you know so the feeling of feeling ugly, that's, that's not a feeling I want to feel. So I'm going to do everything I can to stay away from that feeling. 
So the more we can work with this consciously, the more we can help with it on that subconscious level as well. And oh, I just lost my train of thought. I was going to say something else. Oh, and that's another reason why when we work with affirmations around our goals, it can be really good to create affirmations around your goals and work with them daily because then you're bringing your goals into the realms of the familiar and the known. You're removing it from the realms of the unknown and unfamiliar, which your brain perceives as the unknown and unfamiliar is a threat, so we stay away from them. So just say I want a, a Ferrari, you know, let's say that's my goal. Uh, so I want a Ferrari, but I've never been in a Ferrari. I, you know, don't know anything. It's really unfamiliar to me. But So because it's unfamiliar, there's part of my brain that's like, we don't know that. That's not safe. You know, you can say you want it, but that's not safe. That experience for us isn't safe. But the more I start working with it, writing I want a Ferrari, maybe I put some pictures out, you know, bring it so it becomes familiar to me. It's helping my brain move that from unfamiliar and unsafe into safe and familiar yeah so cool i just imagine my my assistant like oh so many so many things to write down sort of from this <laughs> oh, no, <it's> <laughs> we we have a big uh, a high pace of information happening here it's so good okay, <laughs> oh, okay. and when when you have a week ahead of you how do you put affirmations like you sprinkle them on consciously on sunday or you work every day just like what comes up or how do you plan a week or i know you're you mm. you like planning i don't like planning yes. so i'm really <laughs> curious i'm really curious how you like perceive a week or a month or even a year yeah. with yeah. all your techniques so, and tools Sure. So I, I have a daily journaling practice. And so I will use my affirmations in my daily journaling practice. I'll write them out, uh, the things that are on my goals. So I'll write them out, write the affirmations out. So I do that most days. I'll also, I have the audios that I listen to, not every day, every few days. I often listen to them while I'm exercising. So when we exercise, our brain creates endorphins. One of the endorphins is called brain-derived neurotropic factor, and this supports the growth of new neurons. So it's like it helps with your, your brain rewiring. So if you can do things like affirmations or work on the new beliefs you want to have when you're exercising, it's like you're priming your brain. So that's when I really like to listen to my audios. And also they're quite, um, my new affirmations are quite high vibe, you know, got a bit of a beat. They've got, they've got a bit of music with them, so I get really like, ah, like amped up when I listen to them so it's good to do while exercising uh, I also like to I might have little reminders like on a post-it note or on my mirror or on the windows I have reminders pop up on my phone uh, about again about goals I'm working on and either as an affirmation like I am blah 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 or as a and I something addressed to me like you are you know so I read it you are oh, you know so that reminder <laughs> Um, yeah yeah and but so it's interesting what you said about planning I mean you don't have to plan but you could have it stack so stack doing affirmations with something else you already do on the daily you know so every time you do your teeth perhaps you have your five affirmations that you say or the five things you're working on or every time you make a cup of tea which maybe is three times a day or you know, something that you're already doing that you can stack and um, layer the, the new habit on. That's a really effective way of easily using affirmations. Uh, sometimes, so again, with music, there are so many beautiful songs that have affirmations in them or are, are affirmations. So singing can be a beautiful thing to do. Uh, mirror work can be amazing, quite confronting, like looking at yourself in the mirror, but addressing yourself in the mirror with affirmations. Uh, that's probably the main ways that I use them on the daily. Yes, yeah, so I don't so much plan my week, but probably every every few months I'll, I'll change up the affirmations I'm working with in my journal. And as a, it's a really great way to see how I'm progressing as well by the journaling. You know, I see how how I'm changing or how the affirmations are changing or how they may be losing a bit of emotional, energetic charge. So I need to change them up to bring that back. 
yeah, it's a really effective way working with them if you already have a journaling practice. So cool. I was just changing up some things popping up on my phone because I found all the oh. affirmations which, which are so beautiful. And then I saw lists yes. of like 2013, what to-do lists I didn't wow. know because I lost the track on, uh. the, on these, on these um, lists on my phone. But it was like, oh, wow, that seems like ages ago. And uh, yeah. yeah, it was nice to tick them off and write new, write new um, lists. And also the yes. pop-ups. I think it's so switch off all the news pop-ups and um, all the Facebook, Instagram pop-ups, but create your own affirmations yeah. popping up. That's so, so powerful. Definitely. So, yeah. so much better than like, oh, this happened and new Corona like news, like, oh no, mm, come on. Yeah push it away yeah, and, and, definitely. and create your own reality it's just just healthier mm. and you have more energy and you have more to give to the world than yeah. just bombarding yourself with with yeah. outside news yeah because we don't we don't realize like our brains are taking in information non-stop even when we're sleeping we take in information you know we are aware of what's um you know going on like on some level so everything it's like we're programming ourselves all the time but we just don't realize it and when we realize that we are programming ourselves we can start programming ourselves with good stuff you know and powerful stuff and stuff that's going to make the changes that we want to make so you know there's where we want to be is where we are and then where we want to be and there's that gap and in that gap that, that gap is where the magic happens that gap is where we start changing the story start changing the beliefs and start programming and rewiring our brain to get to where we want to be and there's so many opportunities throughout the day and even just like you said with what we consume but even on instagram you know to choose to follow people who are affirming or are inspiring who yeah they yeah, the, the, the content that we consume on Instagram needs to be nourishing. And I, th I find it so interesting that in English it's called, you know, um, content and also it's called our Instagram feed. That In English that's what they say, the feed on Instagram. And feed is food, you know, and we're consuming it. Uh, and is it nourishing for us? Is it good for us? Is it healthy? Like it's so important to be really, really conscious And one of my biggest hacks for Instagram, because I know, how, you know, Instagram is designed to, it's designed by psychologists who specialize in gambling and addiction. You know, it's designed to keep us there. And they, re they learn really quickly what, what we like. So when I find someone I want to follow, I don't follow them immediately. I just put them in a folder, a saved folder called Curious. Like it's someone I'm curious about. And then I will, I'll leave them there for a while until I either go back and decide, yes, I'm so curious, I want them on my feed, or no, no, that was just me kind of clicking follow mindlessly because something triggered me. It's not really something that's going to nourish me. So, yeah, to be as conscious as we can of all the ways that we're being programmed and to start consciously programming our brain For the better and to get where we want to get you know the saying oh what is it that you yeah if you keep if you keep thinking keep doing the same things you're going to keep getting the same things it's something like that you know so we really need to start if we're going to keep thinking the same thoughts we're going to keep being in the same place and we really need to start consciously working to work with the power of our brain to change our thoughts you know which ultimately changes our life and the more we can understand how freaking powerful our brain is yeah the, we, we, we can change 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 the world change our life and change the world yeah do you have songs which you really like i have that because you know english is still not my first language so i'm like wow i love this song the music and then i check the lyrics and i'm like oh no come on <laughs> and i can't listen to it anymore or just with mixed feelings because like take take yeah church do you know this, this song? take me to church da, 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 da. I'm not good oh, yeah I, I really yeah, 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 yeah. such an intense song and then I I saw the video yeah. it 
devastatingly like brutal and like oh come on no 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 but are your playlists like scanned on affirmations too because the the lyrics are so bad sometimes like come on i love this totally yeah 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 so nice so i have um i have i've got i've got different playlists and some are for the words only and some are for the feeling or the vibration of the song so i do think I, I believe that the vibration can override the words okay. in anything. I think the words are still important. Obviously, if you're singing along, ideally the words are a high vibration too. So, yeah, I have got quite a few, like I've got a playlist called Worthy as Fuck and the songs in there are about worthiness. So probably most of them, there's lyrics. I probably haven't scanned the whole lyrics, but there's definitely about worthiness. Whereas other songs, maybe the lyrics may not be amazing or as conscious but the vibe is enough like to really get me in that kind of feeling vibe yeah so I, I go with the two I do both yeah and I, th I do think the feeling yeah the feeling is more important than the words the words it's so tricky because words are so words are so important but I really think it's the feeling and if you think in the terms of the the hierarchy in our brain the feeling brain is the older brain And that's more dominant than the thinking brain because it's older. So I do think the more the feeling is going to tap in and going to be stronger than the, than the cognitive or the thinking. That's so good to hear because like, oh, I want to listen to this song, but I don't want to infuse myself with like devastating texts about relationships or like really yeah. like violence. I, I'm so far away from violence and and. But yes. I, if I like the song, it's like, oh, no. And it's yeah. the same, I think, for food, you know. I really enjoy junk food so much. Mm. And I really yep. think or I believe that enjoying a nice junk food plate with, like, high vibes is just not bad for me. Really not. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And also... If you because you believe that it's not whereas if you believed it did affect you it would affect you you know like the placebo effect is so so huge and so known and uh yeah the power of our brain when we believe it's the belief that's the most important thing you know you could believe that big macs were gonna nourish you for the rest of your life and they would if you truly believed it yeah, <laughs> yeah. that would be a challenge but um i I eat vegan like 95% and I couldn't eat meat anymore. That's like no, no exception yes. is yeah. possible. Yeah. But like having a little normal mayonnaise now and then or something like yeah. that. That's like, I didn't sign yeah. a contract with anybody on this world besides me. So I can do whatever the fuck yeah. I want. Like this yeah, freedom, this can. freedom <laughs> is so good to experience. But as I get aware of more and more things, sometimes it's, Like, oh, this is exhausting. Like, I have to check the words in my music. And uh, that's so cool that you say, like, <laughs> feeling brain is dominant. No worries yeah. if the vibes yeah. are, are right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's my yeah, tagline. That's so you know, joy is my compass. If it brings you joy, just do it. Yeah. It's against the rules. Yeah. It, it's, it's messing. No, if it's messing up with others, you have to consider that. But if you of feel course. really good, and joyful just do it like swim naked in this lake and everybody's watching you why not if you don't want yeah. to do it don't do it so, yeah yeah it's, it may. it's really yeah. interesting to break free from all these expectations i think yes and feelings you know feelings are a, a such an important biological you know the function of them is you know do we is it something that we want more or less of is it a benefit or threat like feelings are such an important gauge and measure and the way our body our body because we often feel them in our body communicates things to our brain you know feelings are so so important and i think i do believe we're becoming more aware of the importance of feelings but i feel like there's been, there's been so much A focus on the thoughts and the cognition rather than the feelings which for me also relates to the masculine and the feminine you know mask i mean we're generalizing here but 
the masculine as the thinking, the cognitive, the thoughts, the feminine as the feeling. And uh, traditionally, in you know, my culture at least, that the, the focus has been more on the masculine. And now I think people are beginning to bring more focus of the feminine and the feeling in and recognizing, you know, the importance of both. They're both so, so important. And one isn't better than the other. They both complement each other and are so important for you can't have one without the other. They inform each other. Yeah, and we have both in us and, and we can be more this or that some, some days or some even hours. Mm. And yeah like a dance for me i like that or at the flow it's not like er, er, er. you don't have to switch you combine and you know if you mix different yeah. colors it's like yeah it's not black or white you can you can um, dance with these energies how do you yeah. i mean you are so aware and so in the flow in your life how do you teach that or be the role model for your for your girls because they don't have to be the nice girls that's mm. so empowering but then you have so many different possibilities to really empower them to be who they want to be how how do you do yeah. that or do you have any tips tricks or or yeah. knowledge about that how do you do that we we do I, I do talk a lot now that they're there um 11 and 8 so i you know i feel we can talk about a lot of things now so i do talk about a lot of things but the, like the conditioning i think the conditioning runs so deep it's not just me so um oh maybe a year or so ago they went to the the cinema to the movies with their grandmother i'm sure it was with the grandmother yeah and I, when they came back i said how was the movies and they're like, oh, it's fine, but this boy behind us kept kicking our seat. And I was like, why didn't you say anything? Oh, we didn't want to. And it's like, oh, my God, <laughs> like, oh, you know. Oh. Um, another example is we go to the dentist and I've said to them, you know, if it's painful or anything, you just raise your hand and you let me know and we will stop straight away. It's, you know, it's so important. It's your body. It's so important that, we, you know, we can stop. And, yeah. Often I'll ask them, are you okay? Was it painful? It was. Why didn't you raise your hand? I didn't want to. It's like, oh, you know, it's just it's so ingrained to not cause a fuss, to not uh, make a scene, to be the nice girl. So I guess, I mean, the most important thing is modelling. I try to model it. But because I'm still healing this myself, you know, I mean, maybe I'm not the best model. But modeling and then talking about it. So, you know, to say that's totally fine to raise your hand, please just, you know, raise, raise your hand, say it if you're in pain, or it's totally fine to say to that boy, like just to reinforce it, that your feelings are valid and you have a voice. Um, what other tips? I mean, are they, we do read a lot of beautiful, like kind of you know, child appropriate feminist stories, things like that. Uh, yeah, I think talking is probably the biggest thing. I mean, and, you know, the, the future will tell how how successful <laughs> I've been. Yeah, it's, it's so tricky parenting. I, I do struggle with that. Yeah, and in the end, they're persons responsible for themselves, you know, like... Of course. Just just release the, the, the weight of the responsibility that they have to be yes. a certain way, like... I, I, I really yes. like this free feeling and I was never the mother like, oh, my kid is so big now. She's off to kindergarten and here they walk. <laughs> Normally they walk by themselves and our kindergarten yeah. was really nearby. We could nearly see her entering the door. Not yet, not quite, but like yeah. really close. And an American friend was like, oh, no, in America, never, ever somebody would let the child walk away. And it was just for me, it was like, yes. She's she's big now. She can decide, yeah, and yeah. she can, she had like I don't know two hundred meters, and we planned for at least fifteen minutes, you know, because she was watching some snails and like it. Take yeah. your time. Have your own adventure on this little little oh. um, distance. I think that's empowering too. To just or yeah. in our. Um, living space here in Zurich it's possible that the kids are just doing their thing they're 
going for a dog walk with somebody's dog and then they are there or yeah. there and getting them getting her back home is like where are you because she doesn't have a cell phone I want to yeah. I want to um yeah keep that away as long as possible but like where is she you know and then oh she went to this house and I love this because I had this too I, I grew up in in a little village and we were just away until it it turned dark and then we came home and my mother had no idea where we were and having the freedom and the possibility to decide myself that's that's a big need for me so I want to give that mm -hmm. to you. oh that's beautiful yeah that's so beautiful but then she's the nice girl you know and she's half Japanese so that pushed through so mm -hmm. many times I'm like oh no yeah and I'm the yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you're so loud. Like, I can I can say whatever I can. No. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. Oh, it's, yeah, it's tricky. But let's come back to yourself. You helped the whole audience now with so many knowledge of, of yourself. But you personally, <laughs> you said music. What about food? What do you like with food? Because that's such a feeling thing too. Like, yeah. Ah, uh, food or, or um, mm, yeah, not much related, related uh, joyful things. You said chocolate in the beginning. Yeah, I bring, yeah, and I do. I do like some sweet things, but with food, I like to really. My favorite kind of meal is like a, a tasting plate, you know, and you get your favorite things and you make a plate. And I do like to make it look nice uh, to put, you know, this here, that there, that there, and, and make a you know, make it look like art, like I do really enjoy that. And I enjoy when it's a tasting plate, just that kind of mindful eating a bit, a bit of this, a bit of that. Uh, my partner's a chef, so he does occasionally cook for me, but when he does, it's amazing. So I do like having a nice, having something amazing. And I'm vegetarian as well, so I don't, I'm not vegan, but I don't do too much dairy. But I love eating out somewhere that's a beautiful scenery or surrounding. Like just the beauty in it. I think making it an experience and the beauty in it feels really beautiful. And you know, eating seasonally can feel really nice. Obviously here we're in summer. We've got mangoes in our garden. We grow coconuts, banana. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty magic. <laughs> yeah, Not even in it's summer, pretty magic. It's possible, yeah. Yeah, and then the summer here, and uh, the winter here, sorry, Winter where I live is strawberry season. So winter we go strawberry picking and it's all strawberries. Like it's, you know, that's what the kind of climate we're in. Uh, and, you know, avocados, you know, really beautiful subtropical uh, food. So, yeah, I think just to me it's more the beauty though, making it beautiful, making it beautiful and enjoying, yeah, enjoying that. Yeah, like strawberries in winter. That's like the dream, you know, <laughs> we have strawberries from far away in the supermarket and I'm always annoyed, like put away these strawberries, which yeah. taste like cucumbers because it's not the yeah. season. I love to go, go to yeah. the strawberry picking field too, but that's like July. Yes. Like the middle of yeah. summer we get strawberries. That's, that's about, yeah. 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 But the beauty yeah. of food, I like that you attach beauty to food. I think so too. Like, mm prepare a nice plate for yourself even if you eat just by yourself is so yeah. you're worth a nice plate and not splish and splashing yeah. something on, yeah. on or even eating out of a I don't know Tupperware I don't yeah. like that I like yeah that. no same yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's all about like, treating yourself like the queen the queen you yes. are yes yeah, and being mindful and being present, being in the moment, yeah, that really helps. Yeah, but you see, like, I can feel your, your appreciation, you know, for your view, for your food, for your music. And I think that's, that's so beautiful in itself, the appreciation of your life. And you can design another life and a bigger life. But right now, if you can stay in the moment and mm. like, wow this is good and this is good how much do you you said you're shielding yourself from the news but like some things which are not yet like you want them to 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 be how much are you focusing on the good because I always teach that but sometimes 
I feel like this is real too. This is my reality and that's not good yet. So what do you do with that? Like, I don't want to annoy people with the focus yeah. on the good, but it's just more powerful to do so. But we have to totally. do yeah, definitely. Too. Well, I believe that everything has a reason. I believe that everything happens for me and I believe in the highest good. I believe we're always on the path to best possible outcome, even if it doesn't look or feel like it. So the way the world is at the moment, you know, there's a pandemic, it's pretty intense, and I know there's a lot of suffering and pain. I understand that. And we're, we're very lucky where we are. But I do believe that this is happening for the highest good. I don't know how. I don't know how or what, but it really serves me to believe that it's happening for the highest good. Some, it's tricky, though, because... Sometimes when we have these beliefs that things are happening for the highest good, it can, uh, like, it's almost like putting blinkers on and not seeing what else is going on around us. And sometimes this can be effective and necessary for our survival, but other times it has the effect of keeping things at the surface level and not going deep. And I, I'm a really big believer of feeling the feelings. So while I believe things are going for the highest good, it doesn't mean I've got to feel good about it all the time. If I'm feeling fear or other stuff's going on, that I've got some big feelings, it's so important to feel your feelings. Like your feelings are so valid. So it's not about saying, oh, la, 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 that's a bad feeling, that's going away. It's all for the good, it's all for the good. It, it, you know, the overarching belief is it's all happening for the highest good but I can still have big feelings about it. I can still have fear. I can still have, yeah, tension or intensity in my body or in my environment. And the most important thing is to feel and allow those feelings to process, not just to squash them all down saying, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. You know, like it's so, so important to feel. I've forgotten what your question was if I answered it. What, what do I do? Yeah, I guess I focus on the feelings I try not to get too in my head about it. And this is, you know, the other end of the spectrum is getting so in your head about it to overthink things. And I am a, a recovering overthinker. And that's why I'm, I've got the High Vibes S Bucks course because it's helping people to stop the overthinking, to get in those places of the High Vibes S Bucks, but not at the expense of squashing our feelings. Like really, you know, you've got to feel it, to heal it, so, and also feeling it will reveal it. There's so many benefits to actually feeling your feelings and seeing what's going on underneath. And again, feelings indicate significance to your brain, but they also indicate that there's something going on. So when we're triggered by something or activated by something, something, do you know what triggers I mean by trigger? Yeah, yeah. So when we're triggered by something, then to me, when when we're triggered by something, that's just an indication that something within us needs is out of alignment or needs healing or resolving. And instead of saying triggered, oh, no, no, I'm not going to trigger it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know, it's all that triggers me. Let's look into this. Let's see what needs to come back into alignment or needs to be resolved or healed. And then let's move on. So it's not, it's definitely not focusing on the good we're on nothing else at the expense. You know, the most important thing is to stay facing forward and looking forward, but to still not with your blinkers on, to take it all in and to trust, I guess, trust is a big one, trust ourselves, but trust the higher purpose or the higher order of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And don't put a smile like this on and no, no, everything is good. When, when people ask me, how are you? Yeah. And I don't feel good. I just tell them or start to cry. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. I never had a problem with crying in front of, 300 people in the, mm. in the auditorium of, yeah. of the university really like oh. I'm crying now if you have a problem that's not my problem yeah. <laughs> I think that's something big we can do for our children too that we allow them to feel yeah. their feelings and not tell them like yes. Shh, or not now or behave mm -hmm. yeah we, totally. we established yeah. really the the custom kind of custom that when she really feels low and and Mika's now 10, you know, it's like the teenage feelings yeah. are coming along. So she says, can I hug you now? And, and then it's just like melting into. Aww. And that's so beautiful. Instead of pushing, we, we talk about that. Yes. Like if you push me away, is that meaning that I should try again or just leave you alone? Because mm. I think that's important mm. too. It's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, 
Oh, it's beautiful though. It's a beautiful way of parenting. Yes, yes. And having tantrums, I like to have my own tantrums. So why would I <laughs> not allow my kids? It's, and it's processing. It's processing it. It's feeling it. It's so important. And to to feel it, to let it out, to let it be experienced, not to squash it down. So, so healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And also swearing. I think it's so superficial to have beeps all over and then in every song, <laughs> fuck and fuck and fuck, like, oh, come on. Where yeah. are we wrong? Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. I always like to ask in the end, like, what's your message to the world? The whole world can listen to this podcast. It's not... Yes. Not all the billions are listening to this episode, but what's your message to the world? For mm, oh, my gosh. Uh, my message to the world is that you have a really, really powerful tool that will help you to create the life that you really, truly want and you are so worthy just the way you are of the life you really, truly desire. And the tool that you have that will help you is your brain. And the more you can start tapping into its power and working with it alongside it rather than letting it just do its thing, the more you can really create that life that you desire and that you're so worthy of having. Yeah. So beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> your, we will put your book and your course and all your contact information, oh. all of your inspiring Instagram posts to everything into the oh. show and into the comments. Thanks, lovely. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and if anyone wants to um, slide into my DMs on Instagram to talk about F-bombs or thoughts and feelings, um, my DMs are always open and I love, yeah, love chatting all that stuff. So thank you so much for chatting and for listening Mwah. Mwah. thank you to australia and thank you to internet making that possible it's just yes. amazing to me every time that's an appreciation thing too like this is this wasn't yeah. possible 10 years ago or yeah or, uh, amazing. Longer before than that yeah thank you so yeah. much natalie for your wisdom and oh. your energy and your sparkles and the summer heat <laughs> like beaming over to yeah cold switzerland thank you so much and take care Aww. and talk to you soon bye. thanks lovely bye. bye if you liked this episode i look forward to a review from you and it would be so nice to hear from you what you liked best and what is your takeaway and maybe it sparked some idea you really are surprised to to have this idea now and you can go and create joy for your life and please tell me about it i would love to hear from you my contact details you will find them in the show notes have a wonderful day